Dear brothers and sisters, uh, today the way to Orthodoxy led us to the, I think, the biggest icon of our church, the icon of Saint Seraphim of Sarov, the Russian church uh, commemorates uh, him on January 15th and I asked uh, Father Victor uh, to tell us a little bit about this icon. Yes, this icon was uh, painted about 55, 60 years ago uh, by uh, a well-known emigre iconographer, Nikolai Popkov. Uh, he has since passed away. He's buried at Holy Trinity Monastery. Uh, he lived and worked in Nyack, New, in New York, which is a, a small town on the Hudson River, about 30 miles uh, northwest of New York City, and uh, I had the honor of serving as a deacon there three years, and the church there, the Protection of the Mother of God uh, Parish Church, was all painted by uh, Nikolai Popkov, and also by Father Serafim Slobodskoy. Uh, Nikolai Popkov and Father Serafim uh, were uh, friends. Uh, they went; they were in the Red Army together, and. Uh, captured by the Germans and put into uh, a prison. And both of them were able to uh, survive because they were both accomplished artists. And they would paint uh, for the people who attended the, the prison. And they were fed decent food, more or less. But, um, uh, of course, Father Serafim was famous for uh, not only being a very energetic one of the best priests of his time in the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia, uh, but also uh, because he wrote uh, a very famous book, Zakon Borji, The Law of God, which was uh, printed and reprinted many, many times, uh, both here in, uh, in the West, at Holy Trinity Monastery Press in Jordanville, but also when the time came and uh, uh, Russia became free of the communist yoke. Uh, they started printing this book in, in Russia also in many thousands of uh, copies. So Nikolai Popkov painted the church in Nayak. He also painted the uh, uh, walls of the uh, uh, church at Holy Novodivyeva convent uh, in um, New York as well, and other places. And uh, he painted this icon, he was commissioned to paint this icon by uh, our parish, as I said, about 60 years ago, I believe. I, I came to this parish 40-some uh, years ago, and the icon was already here. Uh, you can see it's a large icon. And um, uh, when we were rebuilding this church, uh, getting ready to uh, paint the walls with murals. Uh, of course, this icon is so big and hanging here, uh, we thought that it should be removed and hung someplace else, or maybe cut down to size and hung somewhere else. But uh, I was thinking of, at first, to put it in the stairwell leading up to the choir loft, and we would have a mural here. But uh, I got a lot of pushback from my parishioners, because this icon is one of the most venerated icons in our in our parish. Um, of course, um, used as a prototype for this icon a uh, portrait which was painted of Saint Seraphim Sorov during his lifetime. This original portrait uh, hangs in one of the uh, chapels at uh, Novodiveva Convent in New York. And uh, Popkov copied this uh, portrait, he just added the background, but the face uh, of Saint Seraphim Sarov is really well executed, and it basically duplicates the uh, 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 portrait of, of, uh, of Saint Seraphim. So we decided that we would paint the murals around this icon and keep it where it was because of the veneration of the people. And of course, this icon catches your eye as soon as you enter the church because it is so large. Uh, but um, 
So anyway, in the background you can see uh, the northern woods uh, where he uh, spent his life. Uh, this is the monastery of Sarov, which during Soviet times was closed because there was a nuclear there's a research facility there, and it's was considered uh, a city off limits to regular people. And perhaps thanks to this, the church and the cathedral of the, of the, uh, of the monastery was, were, were uh, saved. They were destroyed like many other churches and monasteries in Russia during the Soviet time. Uh, inside uh, the icon, we place a number of, uh, of precious relics. That, uh, uh, from St. Seraphim of Sarov. For example, there's a, a piece of his hair right here, uh, a relic of his body. Uh, this is uh, a piece of the rock on which St. Seraphim of Sarov uh, prayed for 1,000 days on a rock. Uh, not, there were two rocks actually. One was in uh, his cell. He prayed on that rock as well, and one outside uh, under the trees. Big boulder, I should say, not a rock. So here we have a piece of that boulder. Uh, we have a piece of his Epitrahelion, which the priest uses when he serves divine services. Uh, we have a, a little portion of his Riasali outside uh, uh, coat that the priest wears. and. Uh, piece of the wood from his house in which he lived. So we have all this little collection of precious relics from, from St. Seraphim of Sarov. So uh, that's something that maybe not everyone sees immediately because they're a little bit hidden away to the right there. But uh, uh, people should keep in mind when they come to the icon that they can not only venerate a beautiful icon of St. Seraphim of Sarov, but also venerate these uh, precious um, relics of of the saint himself. Um, so we keep the icon here at the uh, northern door of the church and uh, we have a candle stand where people can place candles and say a prayer to Saint Seraphim most of often uh, ask of him whatever they want, uh, of course in a spiritual sense. And uh, uh, Saint Seraphim said during his lifetime, this, when, when I'm gone, can come to my uh, gravesite and, and, and pray, and I will hear your prayers. So we feel that we can do the same here in church, come to, to his uh, uh, icon and come up to his relics and also ask him to intercede on our behalf. Am I correct that uh, Father Seraphim and uh, Father Seraphim Slobodskoy and uh, Father Nikolai Popkov uh, decided to paint an icon of Saint Seraphim in case of, uh, if they are, will be survived from the concentration camp. I can say that uh, both Father Seraphim and uh, Nikolai Popkov, there was one other gentleman who was in the little Troika, who lost one artist, I forget his name now, I knew him when he was living in Nyack, but they uh, they decided that um, if God allows them to survive, that they would dedicate themselves, uh, dedicate their talent to the church. Mm -hmm. uh, so this might might be one of the reasons why uh, uh, Nikolai uh, Babkov uh, was so uh, articulate and so dedicated to Saint Seraphim of Sarov. He most likely loved the saint and uh, he painted the Novodivyevo a convent church, and of course, Divyevo was probably the most famous monastery, women's monastery in, in Russia, which was founded by Saint Seraphim of Sarov. So he was definitely dedicated to the saint, that's for sure. We have another icon of Saint Seraphim outside uh, uh, the church. Can you explain why it's there? Yes, um, so that icon that was placed in the shrine and now uh, embellishes the corner of our property was painted uh, by an American artist, American iconographer, and it was placed there you know, for the uh, 100th anniversary of the canonization of uh, Saint Seraphim of Sarov. 
We had a, a Parishan Natalia Vladimirovna Prisovskaya. Uh, she was a wonderful, dedicated church goer. And um, her, Saint Seraphim was uh, her distant relative. She had great veneration for him. Uh, she had an icon at home uh, which was present at the canonization of Saint Seraphim. I'm sure her son now has it. Uh, but, uh, and perhaps she had something to do with this icon in the sense that maybe she donated the funds um, to pay for this icon. But I, unfortunately, uh, in my 40 some odd years as rector of this parish, I haven't come across any archival material which could um, support what I'm saying about her um, connection to this icon. But that she was a, um, a relative of, uh, of St. Seraphim, that's for sure. She was very proud of that. Um, uh, her other distant relative was um, Actually, uncle, I think, was uh, the late rector of the uh, St. Petersburg Theological Academy, uh, Midugin was his last name. I can't recall his first name. Actually, he was uh, uh, a well-known theologian in Russia, and uh, he was the rector when the uh, academy was known as the Leningrad Theological Academy. In, during uh, in the 70s and 80s, uh, Mrs. Prisovsky uh, helped me very much in um, corresponding with my listeners of my religious broadcast to the Voice of America. She would, I just didn't have time to deal with, with the volume of letters that I got. But uh, she would write letters to them on my behalf and uh, we collected um, old religious magazines and uh, books people no longer needed it. We uh, used the auspices of the Voice of America to send this literature to Russia after uh, Glasnost and Perestroika were announced in 1985, when we could freely uh, correspond with, with people in Russia. But she was a wonderful woman and a great help to me personally. She was sort of like my, my secretary, if you will. So I can say that my uh, Late secretary was related to Saint Seraphim. Thank you very much.